this is this is the main Zybooks landing page, and you'll see over here on the left there are all the chapters and sections for your e-text, and over here on the right is the control panel that instructors and students use to uh, to, to interact with the class. Um, the main the main pedagogical philosophy that Zybooks use is to get students to interact with the material as quickly as possible and address the misconceptions that they have about that topic. So that way we can build them a really solid foundation right out the gate. Um, now, if you, if I'm going to, I'm going to pull up a, uh, an e-text that doesn't have a, a ton of interactivity in it. Um, and if we look through it, this is a wall of text for students to dig through. Like there's images, sure. But there is a lot to read and dig through here, and that's overwhelming for a lot of students. They'll see that and they'll go, okay, I can get through maybe a quarter of this before I run into jargon that doesn't make sense. And they and they kind of and they and they give up. they they break down a little bit. Um, so if I pull up if I pull up a a section in a Zy book, what you're gonna see right away is that, yes, we have the same, uh, the same print text in here, but we break it up with these participation activities. So that way students are able to have these little oasis of learning pods <laughs> throughout the books um, that they can latch onto. And it gives them a visual mapping for what's going on inside of that dense text. It, it, lets, us, it lets us visualize it a little bit more. Um, so in this case, if I, if I run through this animation, we can see pretty quickly, okay, we're trying to understand what a phase diagram is and how to determine what these compositions are. So we can start with that with that alloy. We define what the tie line is. We can go through every step. And as we're as we're going through it, you'll notice that there's a caption underneath of each step. And that digs in a little bit more to what's going on. Um, and we actually have alt text behind every single animation that expands on what's going on inside of the animation. Um, and it allows screen readers to pick up everything. So students that are re that rely on screen readers are going to have the same experience as students that don't rely on the screen readers. Um, and we actually, uh, a year ago, uh, won an award at ASEE for a best in division conference paper for coming up with better engineering alt text guidelines. So we were real excited about that. Um, so students can go through, they see these participation activities and it sets them up to understand how to solve tougher problems. Like right here, we're just going through the definition of this tie line, which is, which is you know, difficult and tricky for students on the first pass. But as we keep digging through, we immediately ask them questions about it. We want them to understand where the uh, where the different uh, phases are, how to define the terms, because if they don't know the baseline definitions of things, how can they answer end of chapter problems, right? We're not setting them up for, uh, we're not setting them up for success. Um, we're, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're kind of, um, we're hoping that they know what the answers are before we ask them. So by using these, these question sets, we make these a little more difficult with every question. And we get to a point where they're able to uh, they're able to answer more complicated things. And in every instance, if a student guesses the wrong answer, we give them the explanation as to why it's wrong. We don't just say, "Congratulations, student! Better luck next time." We want them to understand what the mistakes are. Um, and this is similar to the SATs, where they have trick answers that they want students to make mistakes on. Uh, only when we're authoring these. We treat them more as warning signs. We want to warn the students, hey, this is a common mistake. Please be aware of it and know to avoid it in the future. We're, we're trying to help them understand every iteration, not just the right answer, but why the wrong answer is wrong. Um, so as we, as we go through, um, we turn to more and more difficult problems and we start walking through the math of some of these trickier, for some of these trickier uh, problems. You'll see the students already know what this first step is, making the tie line, defining what those uh, what the compositions are. And now we can dig in and start saying, OK, what happens when we change the composition of a material a little bit? Um, if we slide that around, that changes the distance that the composition is from the uh, from the different phase lines. And so that's going to change the amount of liquid or the amount of solid that's inside of the material. 
just by doing that. And since we know that information, we can expand on uh, on it a little more and start digging into the specific maths. How can we find the phase fractions? Where are these values coming from? And so every time we're talking about these participation activities, we're working through these high level, con these dynamic concepts in a way that's going to make sense for students. And this is a huge upgrade from here are several equations and a wall of text to walk through. We're giving them the visual mapping so that way they can track it, which is really, really cool. And we keep asking them questions about it. We make sure that uh, every step of the way, uh, even when we add these uh, VMSE tools uh, into the book that we embedded, we make sure that they're able to use this to determine what the tie, li uh, what the tie lines are, uh, what happens if we increase or decrease uh, various phase fractions? What happens if we change the temperatures? Um, what happens at different levels? We ask these questions to reiterate to the students, this is important to get them going. Um, and then eventually, we, uh, we even double down and make sure that we talk about the definitions. We love using these matching questions for that because students can go through and drop the uh, term to the definition we give them the explanation for it, which is handy. And even when they get everything right, they can hit reset and they use it like flashcards over and over and over again. Um, and, you know, get it in, in, in the engineering books, these baseline definitions are what students struggle with. So we make sure that we give them a tool to learn that as they go through. And then at the very end, we have these challenge activities, which are the end of chapter homeworks. But you'll notice, we already know a lot of this information because we've seen it in the animations. We've seen it in the question sets. So it's no longer just a game of the students had to know it. And, uh, you know, it, it's not it's not just a case of the students needed to know it before working on the question. They've learned it by reading the section and doing the participation activities. So now they're able to jump through real quick on these and it makes sense to them. So now it's a fair summative assessment because they've had a fair shot at going through the material and learning it.